What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. We've reached another Friday, which means one thing. That's time for last call. That's right. This is the Final Order Cutoff show where we're giving you our picks for comic books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday, hence the name Last Call. Jack, busy, busy, busy week. Busy week between three up, three down. Great bolo show this week and some great books. Yeah, the comic market's really heating up. I feel like we talk about that all the time, but we are seeing some real modern heat. Books that um, were kind of afterthoughts, uh, overlooked, uh, have started to really rise, and it really makes you relook at your, your Bolo show, your new comic book day show, as well as those final order previews, because these are tomorrow's back issue keys today. Right, we're getting into it right now, starting with our first pick, which is Strange Academy number five. We mentioned on the show before, there's some books that are just plug and play when they come out. We got to mention them because they're just so popular right now. And we want people to know they're heading final or cut off. Yeah, people have been really wondering when these Strange Academy issues come out. We saw that kind of like uh, void where there were less copies available than really the demand was for the first few issues. But now we're starting to see this slow down a bit. Um, there's been some reports of copies being available, um, of people sort of losing steam with the series. I think that this is all natural par for the course. Um, it, we're on issue five. You're gonna drop off your speculators. You're gonna drop off a lot of your, um, you know, people who are trying to invest and you're gonna get really your true readership, but the readership is gonna keep the buzz there. And the readership is also gonna let us know when something worthy of bringing those collectors and speculators and investors back onto the title uh, occurs. And either way, because of that, and because we expect big things from the series, we're not going to stop paying attention to this one. So issue five hitting final order cutoff this Monday at 10 PM. Be on the lookout. Yeah. And that has that Umberto Ramos variant as well as that character spotlight variant, but also stay tuned to the end of this video for some later printings for strange Academy as well. Next one we have, stick it with Marvel, we get that amazing Spider-Man number 52, which also has some great covers. We talked about those Native American art style covers. That's still probably my favorite one for this one as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be putting together that Jeffrey Vereggi set. Um, I think that that's going to be kind of a unique and exciting set. And um, I really appreciate everything that Marvel has done surrounding like the Marvel Voices program to go ahead and kind of give spotlight um, to some underrepresented areas of the Marvel universe and Marvel fandom. Um, but this really is, again, a momentum building for Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, the, the Kindred reveal, some loved it, some hated it. Uh, when you bring in an OG character, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to go ahead and tell you this right now, spoiler alert. Um, so if you don't want to know who Kindred is, maybe fast forward a little bit. But uh, Harry Osborn being Kindred, you get that kind of like ha ha the tie into Green Goblin. It makes sense now. We brought Green Goblin back. So we've got his father. Um, there's going to be kind of a father-son battle. Uh, looks, this looks like a triple threat with, with Spider-Man. Um, I'm on board for that. I'm interested in that. Now, I know that a lot of people from an investment standpoint wanted a more um, unique character to be Kindred, somebody they could really sink their teeth in. Harry doesn't necessarily give that to you. Um, I, mean, I think he first appeared in like Amazing Spider-Man 18 or something ridiculous like that, like some early, early, early issue. Um, but either way... Um, this is one of those things uh, uh, I think that Amazing Spider-Man needs to capitalize on the added attention um, on this run. I hope that they can really deliver with the next arc and then the following arc. Leaving the big two for a second, going back over to Boom Studios. We talked about Mighty Morphin launching last week. Well, this week on FOC, we have Power Rangers number one. All right, so this is going to go kind of along. These are going to kind of be companion series uh, that will kind of go hand in hand. Um, there are several key points to this series. If, if you're at all wanting to know, what's the bullet points? Why should I pay attention to this Power Rangers series? Well, first off, Omega Rangers. So you're getting new school Power Rangers. You're not, you're, you're not dealing with that OG team. Um, if you're looking for something new, a little more cosmic, a little more uh, grandiose in scale and scope, then this is the Power Rangers for you. Um, at the same point, uh, there are some things that some of my variant people, investment people might be excited about. First off, Peach Momoko. So we're getting two Peach Momoko incentives, a, a regular ratio, and then a high ratio version of Peach Momoko. Yeah, one in uh, 250. 
Yeah, so a one in two fifty and a one in twenty five. That's definitely going to get people's attention. Um, then on top of it, we're coming with a one in five hundred Goni Montez. Power Rangers has not had that kind of high ratio variant, so it's going to be really interesting to see. The Momoko is already pre selling like three hundred dollars, so slightly above ratio. Uh, Montez is a little bit below ratio, as I think people are overwhelmed by that one in five hundred. So it's about three seventy five. But these are big, 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 big price tags being paid. And they could go up in value because we've seen over time that like rare Power Ranger variants, there's no telling to what they could be worth. And there's some that will really stun you what they go for. One in 25s that go for multiple hundreds of dollars. So because of that, um, I think that anything's possible with these. Definitely this is one to be on the lookout for. And this is just an exciting time if you're a Ranger fan, having these two series and um, figuring out where they're going to go and how they're going to cross over. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited. I'm excited for Mighty Morphin and Power, and Power Rangers number one. Getting back over to Marvel and getting some new popularity, especially with that Black Widow movie coming out at some point. But we got a new Taskmaster series. Yeah, this is one of those ones you got to talk about new Marvel number ones, right? Uh, new number one, we're going to get some incentives. People love Taskmaster, super cool uh, villain, but one of those villains that kind of has that almost anti-hero appreciation from fans. I think actually Taskmaster is a character that could get popular to the point that like an ongoing series continues. Uh, you know, he reminds me a lot of a character similar to like a cosmic Ghost Rider or a Thanos where it's like, yeah, they, you know, these are not necessarily the best of people but you know donny cates was able to spin into a story that people would be interested in if donny cates was writing this i feel like this would be a sellout regardless and that's no disrespect to the creative team but that's the thing so i think there's potential here i think this is one to pay attention to it all depends on the reader buzz we talk about this you know you can have the sexiest variants right and you can have all you mentioned the mcu stuff and there's great tie in there but if you don't deliver reader buzz to make people really pay attention to this issue then really it's just an issue number one cash grab right for this to go beyond that, you got to have the reader buzz so people want to check out issue two and three. Hopefully, you introduce some new characters, expand the world of Taskmaster, give us some backstory maybe people don't know. Because I think a lot of people have a very limited knowledge of Taskmaster. Most of their Taskmaster knowledge comes from, you know, like the ultimate Spider Man cartoon and stuff like that. I was just going to say that my favorite version of him is from yeah. the Ultimate Spider Cartoons. I love him so much more in animated, more than I do like him in print in a comic book. So. But I'm on board for this. I'm definitely pre-ordering. I'm gonna pre-order cover A just to, for the read. Yeah, this is a read for this is a read for me for sure. This is a big Marvel week for Final Order Cutoff, and no telling. We have Champions number two. We talked about how much we like Champions number one just the other just just a week or so ago on the same very video, but we got champions number two coming. And why do we like this one, Jack? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, long-term play for champions number one. And I think the reader buzz was so strong. And the reason why this is one that everyone's paying attention to is outlawed out. This outlawed story is going to cross over multiple series. And it's one of those ones where there has been so much speculation buzz on champions over the last several years. We've talked about it. Every other channel has talked about it. Um, many, many speculators who were right years ago about things like Young Justice have been talking champions. Um, shout out to Gary Nusser and the comic De Deconspective. I always mess his name up. Um, but shout out to Gary. I apologize. Um, if you're not following him on YouTube, make sure you do. Um, but, you know, he, a lot of the people that I really respect have been early on champions, have been bullish on champions. And, but now we're getting some like real reader buzz as people are interested in this outlawed story, a unique story that kind of um, takes this whole teen superhero thing and flips it on its head, making it outlawed and illegal, and then giving a task force that's in charge of stopping these superheroes. And it makes so much sense because so much of the danger that has occurred within the Marvel universe has occurred from the teen heroes. So moving on to issue two, this is a very crucial issue uh, for this series because Champions has been re-released several times. And if you go back and look at the Champions back issues that are popular, it's issue number ones and then first appearances. What they haven't been able to do is garner that solid reader buzz. So I'm very interested to see issue two and issue three, whether they're able to do that. I am on board. This is one that I'm definitely going to grab. And because so many first appearances are constantly introduced within the series of champions, this is one that is definitely one, if you want to read, you want to pay attention to for FOC. Because we saw this with the last series, whether it was, you know, 
uh, the, the issue 19 and 20 or 22, um, uh, I think five had one, nine had one. All these issues with first appearances that end up selling out. You don't want to get caught off guard. You don't want to get caught with your pants down. And that's why we're here giving you that information on The Last Call Show. FOC! Then here we have, sticking with Marvel yet again, we have that magnificent Miss Marvel number 16, which kind of ties into that last book we just talked about, right? That's right. This is another outlawed crossover. So Miss Marvel, obviously, uh, you know, she's front and center leader of the, uh, of the champions. And in uh, her own title, this is crossing over. We're seeing Cradle, of course, that group that is in charge of, um, you know, stopping teen superherodom. Um, front and center in this one we we just saw them introduced in champions number one we talked about their first appearance on the bolo show that book was a long-term play now we get to see if this group has any uh validity as like a real threat to our heroes and if they really do um then again if you read miss marvel 16 you like it you may want to go back and grab champions one but either way if you're already on board for outlawed if you already grabbed that outlawed one shot if you've already been you know, chomping at the bit to get these stories post-pandemic, then I know you're already on board for Miss Marvel 16. But when we have these tie-ins to popular storylines, this is another really great function of The Last Call Show because these are books that myself, I would tend to overlook. You know, I'd be reading the main story and I'd miss that tie-in. And then you're at the LCS. And especially when the tie-in happens in a popular series, we talked about it before with like DC Comics where you miss a tie-in in a Nightwing or you miss a tie-in in a, um, a Batgirl because the issue sells that. We want to avoid that. So again, last call show, get those pre-orders in before Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at your LCS or wherever you buy comics. And if you don't have a place to buy comics, we have a great one for you, don't we, Brian? We do, but before I get into that, I just want to say one thing. This is That's why you might have seen me look away on the screen here because I had to check to make sure. Unless they add it or they just haven't seen it, this is something really crazy about Marvel. Really crazy about Marvel. I just see the one cover for this book in, in Magnificent Miss Marvel 16. Usually Marvel has like 28,000 covers, right. but I just found that odd. And to get back to what Jack was saying, we do have a great place to pre-order comics, and that is blackcapecomics.com. All the books we talk about on this final work cutoff show, you can pre-order from them. But not only that, this is the indie showcase version presented by Black Cape Comics. Black Cape Comics is huge fans of independent comics, just like we are at Simple Man's. And we're going to get into the Indie Showcase, starting with that Something is Killing the Children, number 12. Now, Something's Killing the Children has been the hottest independent comic series I can really think of. I mean, back issues are insane. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking first print, second print, third print, fourth print. They are all on fire. If you don't believe me, just simply go to eBay, go to Collectibles Comics, and uh, type in Something's Killing the Children, and you will be seen surprised and with issue number 11 we kicked off a new arc and not only did we kick off a new arc it seems like boom studios is recognizing the hit they have on their hands and really supercharging uh this series so we're starting to see retailer exclusives we're starting to see some real upgraded uh incentive variants and something's killing the children number 12 is going to have a big one because there's a one in 25 peach momoko virgin uh incentive variant and this is important because of course we know that peach momoko just signed an exclusive contract with marvel so her 20 cover contract with Boom is going to run out at some point. So there is only a limited amount of this Peach Momoko goodness that's going to end up on these Boom titles before it becomes exclusive to Marvel. So this is one that I would be paying attention to. The reader buzz is there. I know you long time. Something's killing the children. Readers are on this series. It's definitely one you're going to want to pre-order, though. Uh, if you've been very lucky to, to, say, pick up the book real easy uh, at stores, you may want to make sure that you pre-order this one. Uh, because it, this is kind of a, a whole, new, whole new ball game going on with something still in the children. That's kind of mainstay comics has finally, finally jumped on board of this series that we've been talking about for a, pretty much a year now. Right, this next picks, actually the next two picks we talked about pretty much all week long with this publisher, Three Up, Three Down. We talked about how Vault was heating up. New comic book day, the Bolo Show video, we talked about new hot, two new releases from vault but here we got two picks also the first one being walk with monsters number one yeah walk with monsters was and again with both of these titles we're sticking with that horror theme which in my opinion is 
Vault at its best. Now, Vault is a diverse group of creators and writers, so they can come with all kinds of different stories. But I have found that when I have enjoyed Vault books the best is when they've kind of played into that horror trope. Walk with Monsters, number one, as well as Dark Interlude, number one, hit uh, Final Order Cutoff this week. Two great titles. We saw two titles, as you mentioned, get released this week. We talked about them on the Bolo Show. Sold out everywhere. Sold out at big retailers. People were telling me they were having trouble getting those issues, or there were very few. Or when they were finding the covers, they weren't able to find the pulp cover. They were able to find maybe cover A, but they couldn't find that variant. So these are all reasons why, uh, especially with independent comics, that final order cutoff is extremely, extremely important. So make sure you are contacting your LCS and letting them know, especially with Vault Comics. If you want to get on in any series, you want to put them on your pull list, make sure you're adding them. Um, if you want to go beyond issue number one, make sure you're letting them know. But at the very least, if you're looking for these variants, if you want to grab these covers, if you want to check out issue number one of Walk With Monsters or Dark Interlude, a uh, great place to do it is BlackCaveComics.com. You can save 15%. You can pre-order. Uh, they ship with, with care. They've got that, um, that comic tank mailer uh, to ship those books to you safe and secure. So you, you can really trust Ben and the team over at BlackCaveComics.com. That wraps up the Indie Showcase version, but like we always say, one of the most important parts of this show is we have some additional printings that are heading Final Order Cutoff this Monday night as well, right? That's right. So we have a plethora of them. Again, have kind of uh, is par for the course these days. Um, we're starting off with some major first appearance late printing, so be on the lookout for these first two. X-Force 13 comes with a second print, as well as Wolverine number six comes with a second print, so if you were on that solemn spec, you will like those. Marauders 13 comes with a second print. This is a series that just keeps churning out late printings. Marvel Voices number one, the book I referenced earlier in the show, comes with a new printing and a new cover. That is one to be on the lookout for, and if you haven't read that book, amazing book. Um, Spawn 308, Spawn 309, and Spawn 310 all get later printings with 308 and 310 getting second prints and 309 getting a third print. Um, shout out to Todd McFarlane for bringing the heavy with Spawn. Those are ones to be on the lookout for because Spawn late prints a lot of times can rise in value. Uh, the new Dune series uh, comes with a new second print for number one. And Seven Secrets from Boom continues this boom streak of sellouts and going to late printings with Seven Secrets number one hitting a fourth print and Seven Secrets number three hitting a second print. And of course, that hit series we talked about from Boom Studios is the one we got to finish off with, Something is Killing the Children, number nine, delivering a second print. So there it is, guys. There's our picks. There's our any showcase, plus those additional prints that we like to bring you each and every week on the last call show. Let us know what books you guys are pre-ordering. We always love to hear what, people, what books people are picking up, of course. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next